to the Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company podcast episode 6. Uh, my name's Emma and I am the dyer and owner behind Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company. Um, and I, I sell naturally dyed yarns and some other bits and bobs sometimes. So um, most of you probably already know that. So um, yeah, so I'm just popping in here for a little episode today because I've made some progress on my knitting, which is very exciting. Um, the last time I did an episode, I think I was talking a lot about EYF and stuff, which was seems like a long time ago now. And I had started this shawl, which is the Colour Craze Shawl by Tammy Gore. So there's a little bit of brioche and it's all about mixing all the different colours together. So I finished this. Um, I can't remember where I was at in the last episode, but... <clears throat> um, this is what it looks like. So the shawl is made out of a mini skein set that I had in the shop that I took one for myself. Um, the only colour that wasn't in the mini skein set was this light blue and also the rose colourway which I picked for my main colourway. So I knitted this in my natural sock and I used a full skein of the rose, the main colour colourway, plus the the five 20 gram minis plus a little bit extra of this blue here so um it turned out to be like a really quite a large shawl when i went to block it it didn't fit on my blocking boards exactly <laughs> all of it i could have done with another one but i just blocked the main part of it um i finished off with a pico bind off um, I've been wanting to do one of these for a while. I did one before and I thought, oh, maybe it would look really nice on this. Because um, I think it's quite a stretchy bind off. I'm not sure. You're kind of cast on stitches. So um, the pattern said to use your favourite stretchy cast off. So I used that one. And um, I really, really enjoyed this. This is my first time doing brioche. And... Um, I was kind of freaked out by it at the start because I didn't do much reading up about it or anything and I actually knitted this section here about 15 times approximately um, until I found a tutorial about brioche in the English style of knitting so um, what I might actually do is create like a couple of separate little videos just explaining how to do brioche like it's it's not hard when you um, when you know what you're doing it's just if you just read the brioche instructions straight off without doing any research how to do the stitch you probably do it wrong English style anyway I don't know about continental but yeah I'm really really pleased with this and once I figured out how to do the brioche this was such such a lovely knit I really really enjoyed it like every section was interesting there was something interesting in every section like the brioche the yarn overs changing colors um, I really really enjoyed it and I don't have anything else this colour or these colours so um, it's really nice to add a little bit of pastel sort of colours to my wardrobe so yeah uh, that's that um, very very pleased with it and um, this is the first time I've knitted the natural shawl, sock in a shawl myself and um, it's so warm, it's lovely, I love it. Um, and I will definitely, definitely be using this again for a shawl. Um, so yes, that is my first finished object. My next finished object, I can't remember in the last episode, I posted about this one on Instagram, this t-shirt, which is the 100 Acts of Sewing t-shirt. And yeah, so I think the last time I was, oh dear, look at all those threads. I was hand stitching the binding on because this fabric in the front, I just thought you would see if you just stitched a big line on it. And it's quite like strapey soft fabric on the front. So I thought to hand stitch that, so that was a good idea. So I finished that. <clears throat> 
If some of you don't know, I spent 2018 um, not buying any clothes. So at 2017, I kind of got to the point where I had a, I don't know, I feel like I'm always fairly short on things without holes. I don't know if anyone else is like that. Um, so through that whole year, I didn't get anything. And the idea is, oh, what was the name of it? The whole, I can't remember. One year handmade. <laughs> Um, the idea is to make your own clothes, so um, I made a little bit and since then I haven't really bought anything apart from in charity shops just to recycle stuff so um, but I did make, I made this t-shirt and then um, so I'm trying to basically stock up on my basics because like I don't really, I'm not very good at, well I don't shop really so um, yeah, I feel like I'm, my t-shirts always go into holes here and my trousers always go into holes around the crotch and my socks are just always in holes, my shop bought ones, um, because I haven't bought any of those in years. So they're all going to holes. So basically what I'm trying to do is replace holy items with uh, items that I've made. So my t-shirts, my socks, my whatever. So I found a fabric shop opened near me and I couldn't be more pleased because it is um, a little independent fabric shop and she sources her products either um, as close as she can like within Europe and also she buys like ends of stuff so it might not come again um, which I think is what this is maybe um, so I got this nice fabric and it's definitely my colour I love this mustard colour I don't think you get the true co colour of it in, in the camera but um, so I got this, enough of this fabric to make a t-shirt and so I made this up on Saturday evening just in one evening and I use red bias tape and I'm really really pleased with it. I love the shape of these t-shirts they're just really relaxed and comfortable so I like that. So now I've got two fresh t-shirts that I can wear. I think I spoke the last time about my jeans problem that I can't um, my jeans seem to go into holes so quickly so I have not yet been able to sit down and try to make a pair of jeans but that might be a battle for another time. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I've just been, I found a really good pair in a charity shop so I've been wearing those. Um, but yeah, so um, those are kind of finished objects I suppose. Um, I'll probably make one or two more and then that will be enough. So yesterday, I took yesterday off, I went out with my granny and granda and then when I came back um, I decided to do some knitting. Sorry that's blown out a little bit there, maybe that's too dark. I decided to work in some knitting. So I, the sweater you're always commenting on, my Radari, the one with the yoke, the colour work yoke. Um, I decided to start another one in some different colours because I wore it every day. I've worn it every day for since I've made it pretty much apart from when it's really warm in the summer but every day in the autumn, winter and pretty much spring as well I was wearing that. It was really the warmest uh, jumper I had. <clears throat> so um, in the last episode I had said that my granny was going to uh, she would like one so I was going to knit one for her and I was going to knit one for me at the same time. So after I came back yesterday I decided that I would make a little bit of progress now that I finished this shawl. I would um, do a little bit more on my own. So I think what I'm going to do is knit the two sleeves of mine and then start the body of hers and when I have the body of hers done then I'll start the body of mine 
and one of that done and then I'll start her sleeves and then I'll do the yokes kind of at the same time maybe. I'm not sure. I need to take some more measurements for granny so that's why I haven't started hers yet. But yesterday I only had like this much done of my first sleeve so I'm gonna show you what I did yesterday. I was very pleased. After working in finger and weight yarn for a few months because that's how long it takes me to knit something like this. Um, I was really surprised how quickly the Lope yarn knitted up because it's like, I think it's like an iron weight maybe. I just forgot, like, oh, and it was actually, I have to admit, it was nice to see some progress because with this I was knitting like one row a night or like two rows a night maybe, <laughs> depending. And I was like, oh, I've knitted a whole sleeve. So I was really, really pleased. So not only did I knit a sleeve, <laughs> I actually cast on my second one. So if I had another evening or two, I think I will knit the second sleeve. Maybe this weekend, although I don't think I'll have much spare time this weekend. Um, but that is what I'm working on. So... You can kind of see my colours for it. It's like a green, a cream and a rust colour and then I think I have a grey as well. And my granny um, wants hers in the same colour as my other one. So I've got the yarn for that as well. So that's really cool. I'm really pleased. And I am keeping it in my nice Ola Nua project bag. Which... Um, which is in the shop currently and um, the big ones are sold out but there's some small ones left so I'm um, gonna plug this in it's gonna run out of battery so um, the next couple of things I want to talk to you about is um, well you can see the yarn behind me I will show you some of that in a moment but I just wanted to talk to you about a couple of little things before I would get to that. So, um, some of you might have seen that I have ooh, the new pom pom. Um, that I'm going to have ah, it's on the back page. Didn't even realise that. Um, this is my yarn on the back page. Um, it's a design by Rachel Reese. Um, and the pattern is called Rookwood um, and it's a three skein shawl made out of my natural sock so um, I will have some kits for that not loads and loads just a few um, it's quite it's actually here it is I posted some pictures on my Instagram stories a few days ago so I don't know if you've seen that but um so and this um I'll have some of pom pom in the shop listed separately to the kits for this um what was I gonna say oh yeah I'll have a few kits for the kits for this shawl but not too many because it's quite a dye heavy recipe so I don't like making too much of it um, but I might make a few kits in a different colour or try and come up with a recipe that's less dye heavy. Um, so, um, yeah. So I will have kits in this colour, which is Feed It Fire, this time. And then um, maybe in the future I'll do kits of a different colour. And I can't wait to knit this one myself. This is one of the ones when... Um, when I was asked about yarn support for it, I seen the design and thought, wow, that is really nice. Um, so, not that I don't always think that, but um, yeah, it was very spectacular and it really caught my eye. So I was like, wow, this is so cool. Um, so as well as that, um, I will have the liner magazine in the shop 
Um, this will all be in the shop on the 31st of May, which is my next update. It might be my last update until August. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'll see what I can do. Um, I just have a lot of things going on that I need to die for that's not my shop, unfortunately. Um, and that, and I'm away on holidays, so... Um, but I will have the liner magazine in the shop and I have some yarn in it as well in a sock design by Ash Alberg. Uh, this one's by Rachel Reese, I think I said that. Ash Alberg. And um, I will have kits for that as well. Um, the pattern is called Heather and I don't have the magazine so I can't show you but it's a nice, really nice um, kind of lacy sock pattern I suppose in the colourway peony mauve so I've dyed up like a bunch of that quite a bit maybe like tw 20 or 30 skeins for some dyers out there that's like very very a very tiny amount but <laughs> that's a different discussion for a different day um so I will have a list in for kits I know it's only one scheme but I thought it would be easier for people to remember the colour and stuff if it was on as a kit and the picture of the sock. So that will be, um, that'll be all in the next update. And um, I guess I might as well show you some of the yarn if you'd like. Um, yeah, I'll just go get a couple of things. So three of my favourite colours, um, my solid colours that go together really nicely, I think, is Jasmine, Coral and Spindrift Modified. I think these would be a really fun colour craze shawl and you could add in maybe one or two more different colours. And um, yeah, so these are a nice combo. I really like them. This is them like that particularly these two really go nicely. This is the Fade It Fire colourway that is in that has been used for the pom pom um design. Not sure if it's yeah it's kind of like a terracotta colour I would say. So that's it. Like I said I'll have a few kits. This is a colourway, um, I had collected some eucalyptus and some leaves and some bark and it was a little experiment I was doing with it to see what colour I could get from it. So um, this is what I got, it's quite a nice like subtle yellow and it would go with a lot of things I think, like a lot of other colours like um, this for example, it's nice. <coughs> Actually, this is really nice together. Eucalyptus, and I've just called it eucalyptus. I don't know if I'll make it again for a while. Um, um, I got the leaves for this <laughs> of my aunt's tree, so I don't want to like decimate it too much. But um, eucalyptus trees grow really, really fast. We have one in our garden, which I planted specifically to for dye to dye with. Um, so yes, there is that. This is the Peony Moth colourway. I'm not really sure if, there I think you can see it. Um, that was used in the Lina magazine um, Heather socks. So I will have kits for this and this is what it looks like. It's kind of like a very, very slightly more purplish version of Peony. So peony normally looks like this. Um, so I will have peony and peony mauve. So if you prefer peony mauve for the socks, you can also use that. So that's the peony mauve. Um, I just forgot to show you these, so I will show you these quickly. This is a new colorway called Honeysuckle. 
so this is what it's like. It's a nice mixture of pinky, purpley, warm, kind of yellowish. I'd actually like to take a skein of this for myself along with a skein of Party in the Common Room. Which turned out, some skeins of it turned out a little bit lighter than normal, but it's, look at them together, wouldn't that be so nice? I have plans to maybe start a, I think it's called Sriracha Shawl by Tammy Gore. I really enjoyed knitting this, so I thought I'd maybe knit another one. Um, maybe these with Jasmine, I think, would be a really nice combo. So I've made a bunch of each of these. And with my multicoloured colourways, that's probably not the technical term. <laughs> um, I think variegate is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> um, each skein is unique, so remember to alternate. So I am planning to take a couple of little skeins for myself so I can knit another shawl. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show you the, those two lovely colours. I really love them. So, um, as well as that, I will have Hatch. A few people have been asking for this back in the shop. So I will have this one. Um, I would say the colour in this is not as strong as it usually is. In the kind of more cornflower sections. Um, similar, but not quite quite as intense. This is the Raw's colourway, which is this one. So it actually knits up, well depends what skein you get, but it knits up a little bit different than it looks in the skein. So that's Raw's. As well as that I will have a little bit of BFL Maths and DK. I don't have loads of it. Um, like I think I've said before on here, I'm just one person who does all this dyeing and runs the whole business so I can only create so much. Um, so I do what I can um, and I managed to do some BFL Math and DK. This is Spindrift Light colourway um, and I, I know a few of you were asking for this so I made some of it. This is piled up in a very precarious pile. I also made a few more shawl kits. I made them in slightly different colour, this time Heather, Undyed and Spindrift. Um, so that's quite like my Vera, Vera Val and Maggie Stay, so Stay Soft shawl. Um, I think my third colour is more, maybe slightly not as intense as that. But I will have just a few kits and they're wrapped up in a nice little bit of Irish linen little scraps that I have. Um, I also have the party in the common room on the BFL Mass and DK. I know some of you have been asking for this as well so I made a, a good bit of it. Um, so yeah that would be nice for a near a sweater which actually I I have a sample of now, thanks to one of my lovely sample knitters, Julia. Thank you very much, she did such a good job. Um, so I'll just... So this is what the BFL Massim DK looks like knitted up. This was in the Lina magazine, I'm sure, I, I'm sure you probably know that in the last one. And it has this lovely detail up the sleeve. And it was designed by Fibre Tales. And this colourway is Carrie's Dark Peony, named after one of my lovely customers who originally commissioned the colour. And um, so this is this colour's a little bit darker and richer than the usual peony. Um, and I really like that. So this is very beautiful. I love it. So thanks, Julia. Um, So I am waiting to get a few more samples back from different people so that will be really nice to show you that when they come. Um, 
Oh yes, and I was going to say, um, I did do two or three rounds of kits for the Nera sweater, but if there's more, excuse me, if there's more interest, I'll maybe open another pre-order in a few months. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you is a little collaboration I'm doing with Hannah Lisa um, of HLH Designs, which um, Hannah Lisa makes project bags and we're doing this little collaboration. So I dyed the linen. This is Irish linen from um, a place near where I live, so I can just go and get it. Um, and I dyed the material, I dyed the linen and then she sews up the bags or I think maybe her sewists sew up the bags now, I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, so dyeing material is really different from dyeing yarn. Um, yeah, it's weird to get used to it. <laughs> um, so these will be in Hannah Lisa's shop on the 31st of May opened for pre-order so we're only doing pre-orders um, because then I know exactly how many to make and how many how much material to buy and stuff and it has a really nice copper zipper and the inside of the bag is sewed to perfection it's really really nice um, nicely finished off and it has these two big pockets here and here and then I like it's got these carabiners car yeah carabiners <laughs> I think you call them we hooks for putting stuff on and um, so you can put your stitch markers or whatever onto that so you don't lose them or your scissors also, I'm just gonna turn the bag inside out so you can see what it's like on the inside it has quite a nice like plump feeling to it whatever the special, I think she uses like a special wadding, which is really nice. Um, I think it's maybe wool wadding actually. And I think this is, I'm not sure actually, I'm not going to say because I'm not sure what, what she uses for the lining. So these are the two pockets and carabiner here and here. And then this is how the bottom's finished. So you can see kind of what it's like. The small one is the same, but it just has one wee hook thingy on the inside. Um, so yes, maybe what I will do is put a link in my shop to the listing in hers, in case you're at mine and you think, oh, I would like that. I will maybe do that for you. So it comes in two sizes, a large and a small. So the small would be good for a small shawl, hats, mittens, um, that type of thing. The big one, just to show you in relation to the Olanua, I think it is, um, yeah, it's a good bit bigger actually. It's taller and wider. Um, so you can kind of see. So this would be good I think for sweaters and big shawls and stuff like that. I think you could stuff a whole sweater in it. That's kind of, it's hard to find a project bag that's big enough to put a whole sweater in. Um, especially when you're getting near the end. So um, that is a little bit of what I have. As I said my next update may not be until August. I am doing... Yarn Folk Festival of Wool in August. That is the, I think it's the 5th of August. So I will have a stand there. So if you're from Ireland, North, South, East, West, <laughs> you can come to that. Um, it, it's in August. Some of you have um, been wondering about Woolen. I'm not vending at Woolen, but I will be there on the Saturday. I'm doing a wee class with um, Laura Nelkin. I actually need to do my homework for that. And it's about fixing lace mistakes, so I'm really excited about that. Um, but I'll be there. Um, just come say hello and yeah, I'll, pro I'll be up for having chats and tea and that sort of thing. 
so um and yeah so my next shop update after this could be august i'll have the yarn folk and then i'll have all the stuff from that's left over from yarn folk in a shop update uh, and that is everything i think oh there is one more thing actually mm -hmm. a few of you have asked me already about um advent calendars um I have never done them before but I wanted to give them a go just because it gives so much freedom to do different colours and trying to see what would go nicely together and would be quite fun although I, um, I will be doing them but only a really really limited number because it's an extreme amount of winding mini skeins and I wind them all by hand on this skeiner and it's just really intense so when you think if you add up like 24 20 grams and say you do 15 advent calendars that's like hundreds of mini skeins and winding mini skeins is not my favorite job although I love dyeing them I love labeling them I love all of that stuff um, so I will be doing them. I think I will only do 15, 15 calendars and I don't really want to tell you too much about them but yeah um, I'm excited. I'm gonna do one for myself um, and I hope you really like them. I'll probably put them, I'll list them in July because it literally takes so long to do mini skeins. Um, and then I, when I receive my cone yarn of my natural sock, then I can start winding them all. Um, but yeah, that seem, might seem like very little because other dyers can buy their 10 gram minis, their 20 gram minis, their 50 gram hanks from the mill like that already, but I can't do that. It's not possible. So I have to do it myself and I haven't got like a special machine, it's literally by hand. <laughs> so um, that is the plan, so watch out for that. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to tell you. If you have booked a spot on the retreat, we will be in touch very shortly. There is some information going out about times and that sort of thing and schedule um, hopefully it's going out this week or next week so stay tuned for that but all in all I think that's everything for today and I hope I um, I hope I see you soon again <laughs> bye